Hello everyone. This is Money Matters with the Naples Money Managers. It is August 17th, 2020. I'm Marcus Bickle. This is Dennis Nelson and we have John Kincaid in the background who will be joining us shortly. And uh, this is my first time back in a while. Um, I had my, my second son on June 22nd and I've been back in the office for uh, about a week now and it's really, really good to be back and see all of you. And I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Nelson. Well, but it is good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's, it's quiet here. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Um, um, you probably went through a worthwhile experience with the, with the new child and all that, but um, good to be back. <laughs> it is good to be back. <laughs> Um, market was, uh, was, it seemed to be really quiet last week, but when the numbers were finally tallied up, uh, it was up over 500 points. Wow. It's, uh, I know it's a while was right, but that, that really was less than 2% uh, uh, rally. Um, but the nature of the market seemed to be changing a little bit. Um, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal this morning that, that headlined that, uh, the market is broadening out to include, uh, uh, more stocks, more more stocks that have been depressed that seem to be coming up. They mentioned the industrials, uh, and and you know we've been kind of suspecting that we would see something like this, and that's a really good sign for the market. It's broadening out, people investing in more than uh, Amazon and Apple for for a change. No, absolutely. And and one of the things I noticed, it wasn't last week, but late the previous week when they talked about that uh, that Russian vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, the market reacted really, really positively to that. So I, I really, you know, with the broadening we're seeing, it feels like, you know, it's ready to take off when we get a real, a real start. Uh, I, oh, when we get a real vaccine, mm -hmm. that's going to be uh, something. Uh, I think the um, new cases in Florida last Saturday was 3,800. Yeah, that's that's pretty low uh, and going in the right direction. And thank God for that. Everybody's breathing a, a, a little bit easier, but in, in my view, it'll be the vaccine that'll, that'll really get us uh, uh, relaxed. Another article I read that really kind of made some sense as we try and look forward to how things are going to look once the vaccine is, is gone. And, uh, and this article was talking about uh, the Chinese, the Chinese economy, what the Chinese middle class is buying and how they how they're viewing their purchases differently and i don't see that's probably going to be much different than what happens uh here when we get to that point and and uh, the bottom line on this article was that that they are the chinese are still staying home travel is very very low and and doesn't seem to be going anywhere and i kind of see that happening uh here to uh, maybe a lesser extent but still a major uh, a, a major economic movement. Uh, the other thing, though, that was really interesting is is the purchasing has shifted to health uh, uh, products mm. uh, and quality brand products. They want they built up a little cash over this period of time. I think, like all of us have, and and they're focusing on brand products, um, health products, um, aesthetics. Um, uh, and and a few and a few stocks were mentioned. Estee Lauder, uh, which is up some, but not up a, a, a lot. Um, as people come out of hibernation, uh, come out of hiding. Um, uh, cosmetic stocks, uh, uh, health stocks. Um, you look at a Johnson and Johnson, for instance. You look at a Procter and Gamble. Uh, and last week, I think we mentioned some restaurant stocks. Um, hopefully there'll be a, still a bunch of them in business when this thing breaks open and and we we look at Cisco as uh, with favor we look at um, uh, Darden uh, a big restaurant group uh, also yeah, absolutely and, and you know to Dennis's point you know I think um, the, the, the Chinese middle class takes a lot of its cues you know from consumerism from you know the American middle class you know we are the, the American middle class is prolific in that way. You know, so they want a lot of the same things we do. Big house, big car, nice school for their children. And to Dennis's point, I think you can look at them and see, you know, kind of what they're spending on as being a direct correlation to what might happen here as things begin to kind of expand. And, and I think so. And we're looking at these cyclical stocks and as we come out of these, the cyclicals uh, will really kick in. Absolutely. 
Well, I'll step out now and let John thank you, Dennis. Come on in. Okay. Mr. Kincaid. How are you? Well, yourself? Good. I'm well, thank you. So, uh, I read an article in Entrepreneurial Magazine this morning in regards to passive income, uh, which kind of struck me. Um, I think the ideal income for an investor or for an entrepreneur is passive income, and it usually comes in the form of rental uh, apartments mm. or properties. And the idea for passive, the key word here, is that not much has to be done to receive that income. Sure, sure. And that's kind of a, a misnomer because there's a lot of work that goes into being a landlord, being right? a landlord, right? Yeah, or putting that off. So I thought about that. I talked to a lot of people in the community in regards to their investment strategies. And one thing that uh, our demographic looks for is passive income or income that's created by a portfolio in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and the higher that income stream, the better because where rates are today, obviously. Makes it a challenge. It makes it a real challenge. There's. There's one component that's always mentioned, and that's dividends. And uh, you can find good quality dividend stocks out there. That's not a problem. The second component, so dividends is one. If you, if you, if you really try to get a uh, quantify the dividends in the Dow or the S&P, that delivers about 2%, sometimes 2.5%. Um, but if you look at our strategy, our covered call strategy, for instance, mm -hmm. Dividends is definitely a component. Oh, absolutely. Right, yes. that's one of the parameters in our investment. Uh, that helps us hit our targets. Absolutely, so if you take a dividend stream, which is one stream, and you add another stream, which is our option premiums from our strategy, uh, you basically have two passive income streams that together, over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. that we've managed a strategy, produce uh, right around 9% on average. So if you were to go back 20 years and, and put those all together, divide by 20, the average income flow would be right around 9%, which is truly passive. And I think that's that's really critical because uh, you know going back to the dividends, to find a 9% dividend is, is something that really doesn't exist in the market, or, or if it does, you kind of look at it with a scance. You know, why is it paying that much out into its dividend? Right. So, us having the second component with our strategy, being able to tack that onto the existing dividends, allows us to reach that that fantastic return. Right, and I think the the underlying point to me is is that it's truly passive. Yes, I mean we're literally leveraging income without the risk. And that's huge. Because, no, absolutely. You know, you went back to your nine percent dividend. Uh, there are a lot. There are some nine percent dividends on some stocks, but the risk is uh, equivalent. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you, Mr. Kincaid. Absolutely. And this is Money Matters with Enables Money Managers. And remember, at the end of the day, you matter. Thank you.